Hi there. So today's lesson is about linking shapes, which is part of the nonverbal curriculum. So first of all, what is linking shapes? So linking shapes is when you have two pairs of images. One is complete, whereas the other one is incomplete. In each pair, a rule is applied so that the first image becomes the second image. So if you look at this example here, this example question, we have two pairs of images, right? So these two and another two. So this is the complete set. Another one is incomplete, which is the question. And a rule is applied here for the first image to become the second one. And so with that same rule, you have to apply it to this pair, which is incomplete, to find the second to complete that pair right so if you look at this example here you can see that from the first image to become the second image there must be a rule so we have to work out what the rule can be and the best way to go about this when it comes to exam conditions is the process of elimination which is an important technique we use um, which is an important exam technique so if you look over here you can see the black dot here is below the triangle if you can see in the next image it goes right above right so likewise if you look at the rule here so let's say if we focus on one specific object so for example the circle you can see it goes from the bottom to the top so if we look at this image here that same rule should apply so you can see the circle is right at the top so to complete the pair, the second image must be at the bottom. Okay, and like we said, the process of elimination is a key exam technique that we're going to be using. So if the if this image has the circle at the top, the second image has to have has to be at the bottom, right? So if we look at the answer options we have from A to D, we can see that the only two images where the circle is at the bottom, like we want our answer to be is both A and D, right? Then, so we can rule out B and C. So our only answer options are going to be A and D. Then what is different about A and D is that with A, the inside of the shape, the pentagon, is filled in, whilst the outside is white, it has a white outline, whereas it's the opposite for D. If we look at the rule that we have to apply for the first pair, you can see that this triangle is upright. If we look at the big image here, for the second image, it's turned, it's flipped over, right? As it's flipped over, you can see that the outside of the triangle is white and it becomes black when it's flipped over. And if you look at the inside triangle is black, and then it becomes white when it's flipped over. So the same rule must apply for the second pair. So if you look at the first image of the second pair, you can see that there's a white outline with a black um, filled shape inside. So the reverse has to ha happen when it flips over, which means that the answer option has to have a black outline on the outside and a white filled inside, which means that we can exclude A with the process of elimination because A is the exact same color filling as um, this image here. So that means the only answer option that's available is D. So that means D is the correct answer in this example. So now if we take a step back to look at how we can um, see what rules apply to these pairs, we're going to go off on um, to see how we can like decide what rules or how we can find out what rules apply to the pair so we can work out the answer options for the second pair, right? To complete the second pair. If we look at this mnemonic here, it says never say stop to a cute pa panda, right? So this is like a little mnemonic to help us memorize different ways we can find out um, different rules. 
So this helps us to remember easily. So the first one, never. So the N stands for number, right? So this can be useful if it's like a certain like number, for instance, um, of an image. It, it might include a number. Um, so that would be useful. If we look at the second one, say, the S represents size, okay? So that's like the size of, for example, shapes, for example, or size of um, any objects, like if the size maybe increases or decreases, right? See, if we look at stop, what does that represent? The S represents shape. So once again, you can see in this example how shapes are very, very useful. The T stands for total. So total, this is like the whole object combined. A is for angles. If the angle is changed, for example, if there's like a rotation or if the angle becomes smaller or bigger. The C in cute stands for color. If the colors change, for example, in the first example here, as I've demonstrated, colors have changed where they have reversed. So white becomes black, black becomes white, right? So colors, it could be a color change rule. The P in the panda represents pattern. So pattern, for example, when, for example, with this, the black circle is at the bottom, then it goes to the top. So a similar pattern has to occur, so opposites, right? So with here, the black circle is at the top, now it has to be at the bottom. So that's why it's either A or D. So like that. So this mnemonic will be very useful to help to find out like what kind of rules may need to be applied in order to get an answer. So these are the, it's like seven, right? Seven-ish um, number of rules. These are like the main rules you have to keep in mind whenever you're answering questions. Just try and go over this kind of checklist in your mind to kind of like help you come with a rule. So number, size, shape, total, anger, color, and pattern, okay? And that's what we're going to be using to help answer the next few questions. Thank you.